So, uh, financing is, I suppose, one of the most integral part of the whole debate about the low carbon development. When I say development, it means it addresses the basic frame, basic assumptions of welfare, welfare paradigm. So, I'm not going great details into that. So, this is the current scenario. We are in a locked into a high carbon infrastructure in terms of both the left hand uh, is actually identifying various sectors and then their lifespan. So the more it be, the lifespan, more we are going to get their emissions from all those infrastructures that are there. So it what we require is an unprecedented scale of investments. In, when I say investments, it has to come from both the public and the private, but the combination of both the things are much of a debate at present. And then uh, secondly, the low carbon actions has to be universal, but there should be difference in scale and there should be, it should be based on the, on the demand side rather than on the supply side of it. So what is actually the low carbon, like how globally this low carbon development plans has been conceived? It is actually conceived as a, it, it, it is actually contingent upon the volume, nature and the international support that we are, we, first of all we get and then for the developing countries and based on those, how those developing countries are actually been able to create a frame uh, or both the developed and the developing countries together create a diffusion mechanism of technology and also well, currently it's more of the diffusion, but it also at certain point of time has to focus on the development of technology per se as well. So, so we in WWF did uh, at one point of time did a very kind of ballpark analysis of what kind of technologies that can be actually be uh, considered as part of the low carbon or whole set of technologies that are there and which can be an analysis of what are the kinds of technologies we can actually at least focus for medium, short, and the long-term scenarios. So this, uh, this actually gives you the various kinds of benefit and disbenefit analysis of those technologies that are available, and then the scale of investment that is required throughout, and this is a figure till 2050. This is very much, don't take it as a kind of, the numbers are just indicative. It doesn't say that when I said 600 billion, it has to be 600 billion. It's just the, we are trying to figure out what's the scale of investment we require from different kinds of sources we are, we, we have actually done a literature survey and then find out what is the, what's the kind of investment that we actually want. So it's, it's, it's a kind of, it, it, it gives you an assessment of the scale vis-a-vis -vis what is the kind of international dialogue that is going on. The international dialogue is not going beyond, it's, it's sub 10 billion level that to until 2030, which is a kind of, if you, if you look at the McKinsey, which is a McKinsey estimate, it is actually saying 600 billion by 2020, whereas any kind of, oversight of the international assessment actually it says that it is below 10 billion or 20 at best 20 billion which includes both the private and the public support so that's the kind of disjo disjoint we are currently facing in terms of financing or in terms of actually technology development or diffusion sub support so basically what is what kind of actually what where are we into in an in innovation process, the orange part of this whole graph is actually showing you where is the role for the public sector and the blue part and the mix of those are actually partly funded by the public and partly funded by the private sector. So it actually gives you what kind of role and indicative role how the private and the public can actually work in a in a global innovation framework which can actually produce at least some of the meet the meet the or address some of the issues of the low carbon development so but it's clearly evident that there is a huge gap and the gap is actually been created by the market mechanism which is supposedly one of the one of the one of the backlog or the ba carriage that we have been carrying on with us since the Kyoto Protocol has been set, because it unfortunately it is only the only one mechanism that is put in place, but it has huge lot of 
of these benefits we built into it. The main was it, it created a low hanging fruit kind of a thing through the market mechanism in the form of CDM, which actually disincentivizes the, the private players as well to actually go into more and more kind of innovation framework. And that creates a gap in the funding, which is kind of, which, which sometimes we call is at a value of death, but it's actually, it doesn't actually incentivizes or pushes the public uh, private player to actually invest in that in those form so what they are actually doing is if you go back to the earlier thing it they are actually kind of investing after the startup process but no innovation uh, no funding is or very little funding is actually coming in the left hand side when once the company has been established so that's the that is the failure of the current mechanism which is which is why we need we are so much talking about the technology mechanism and everything else which is there and now coming back to the challenges some of it has been already talked about and well i just need to focus on the political barriers that are going to be put in place it's because of the interest group that are coming in play regarding the nuclear lobby and the oil lobby most of the innovations that you can see is actually happening in making those kind of sectors incentive, uh, well, efficiency or whatever they call it, but it is focused on that. Not many of the renewable energy sectors are getting traction for the international money that has been invested upon. First of all, that is also a problem because if you go back to the, car, if you go back to our recently interim report that has been published by the Indian government, it's clearly evident when we as we as a civil society organization, we everybody when talked about the shift of nuclear to renewable investments, it's clearly we can't match the demand there. Simply it is not there. So there has to be some mechanism or there has to be some mix and match of nuclear or the traditional modes of energy su uh, supply with the renewable sector. But the question there is, is there any possibility whether to to meet the scale of those traditional through the renewable energy that is simply kind of political will or kind of or, or the whole lobby thing that has to that has to have a push for the push for the for the clean technology innovations side so what are the current windows of options that has been created the green climate front the regional funds that has been there by the adb the Africa, the Norway Energy Partnership, various bilateral energy initiatives like the UK initiative, which at least pledge for 2.9 billion pound each year until 2017, which is going to start from 2013. So, and the German government renewable energy funding, but none of it is actually being promoted as technology development or diffusion. It's called technology transfer, which is very much different from the idea of diffusion, cooperation, or everything. Because they actually, what they are looking specifically into the physical transfer of technology, rather than actually getting the blueprint or command on the blueprint of the technology for say. So that's a, another part of the whole financing dialogue. So what are, the, like, I just want to end with these three questions that that I think we should be pondering upon in various forums. Like, what is the priority? What kind of funding we need for, or what kind of actually funding necessity is there for? Or is it actually across the technologies, or we should actually focus on few technologies and go, or kind of stage stepwise approach? Then the issue that my earlier speaker has already talked about. Is it the South-South, it, it, it's more of a South-South cooperation kind. And thirdly, it's more of the institutional mechanism because a because lot of you know, international money has to be accessed through the international uh, institutions. So how, are, how a kind of UN climate system for technology mechanism can produce a accessible and a transparent accountable system? That's, that's really for us to actually give idea about. And finally, it's the changes that we want. Basically, when I was talking, I was just look like my all of my earlier speaker was actually talking about the development from a different discourse. Just think about the international discourse. Everybody of us are talking about two degree goal, and then 
trying to adjust our development needs. Why, whereas it should be the other way around. Like, why don't we put up in a, this way? We need this much amount of human development level to be attained by a particular country. And then how are the options flow in, in a situation whereas we need to keep ourselves in a two degree level. So that's the kind of changes we need to think about or a paradigm change that we actually think about in a, in a current situation. So that's right.